How far did you get with your education? Shit, 10th grade, then got sent off to boot camp, tried to get a GED, but I accomplished that by 10th grade. Explain the scenario there, what happened? Shit, getting in trouble all the time. I just been a you know, troubled kid growing up, still to this day, all the older, like, members of my family or friends or people that know me growing up, they're like, oh, you used to be bad. You know, my, my answer would be like, for real? Nah, not me. But, you know, growing up, I was a troubled child, always going to different schools. And then one day my mom was like, yo, you got to do something with you. Psst, going to boot camp. And then I got sent off. And what happened? How long did you do in boot camp? What boot camp did you go? I went to a boot camp called Willow Gray Academy that's in Columbia, South Carolina. Some might be familiar with it, but I mean, it's like, I mean, it, it was a process, I would say. Mm. What's that like? Because I'm imagining all the kids there are troubled kids like yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically like the military, you know, a military experience where you got to be organized and wear your military uniform, go to PT in the morning, you know, things of that nature. Did it help? Did it work? Yeah, it did, it did. I mean, I was organized before, but it made me more organized about doing things, folding my clothes, you know, different scenarios, think a little different. It did help out. Did the trouble stop after that? I mean, for a little bit, a little bit, but then I finally made a change and started doing things the right way. How long do you think it took after boot camp before the right way? Say about four or five months. You think you would have done the right way without the boot camp? Or do you think that was part of the equation? I mean, uh, I would have, but at the time I wasn't, you know, just a kid, you know, young, dumb, you know, doing whatever, you know, not thinking about life. 20, 30 years from now, you know. And how long was boot camp? I don't know if I asked you that already or not. I can't remember. I think it was like... Six months? Yeah, about six months. Six to seven months. And how does the GED process work? You attempt to get a GED after boot camp or going to boot camp, the end result is you get a GED? You go to boot camp and you go to school at the same time. So you're doing everything all in one in that time span. So you get the GED when you complete the boot camp. Right, right. You take the final test. So in this case, did you actually get your GED before you would have gotten a diploma had you would have stayed in high school? Yeah. I'm assuming here you finished a year early. Yeah. It's almost like you got your GD equivalent to right. if you would have been in the 11th right. grade. Right. I feel it's almost the same thing. If not, to some people, it might be harder, you know. But I feel it's the, it's the same thing. Now, whose idea was the boot camp? How did, what led to the actual boot camp? I know you said you kept getting in trouble, but was this your mother suggesting this that you do it? Was, were you forced to go to boot camp by... Some authority body or? No, uh, um, I mean, it was a sit down conversation, me and my mother, you know, talked about it. And I could tell in the look in her eyes that I had to get it together. So I just went to boot camp. So it was her idea. Yeah. And let's talk about the, uh, well, before I ask you this question, Getting the GED, was that easy or hard? It was easy, because I already know how to do everything. I just <laughs> was bad. <laughs> That's all. Now, speaking of bad, what led to this trouble that you got into or followed you? Or what's, what stemmed it? Are you able to pinpoint it now, looking back at your life and how things turned out, what the root of that was? Uh, I would say lack of guidance, you know, being with the wrong crowd, you know, trying to fit in because 
growing up, everybody's a misfit until they find themselves. So I would say that would be the case. And then, you know, like, as far as my father was in there, because my mama been a single parent, you know, living. Just me and my sister, she always been at work. So just me and my sister in the house. So, I mean, it could stem from a lot of things. Was your father in your life, just not physically? Uh, he left when I was like five, five years old. So I had a connection then, but when you're five, you don't really know a lot of things, but just to have fun, you know, be with dad, be with pops, you know? So after that, as I started getting older, it was like, you know, like with my daddy, you know? Would you remain in communication with your father? No. He tried to call, but, you know, I kind of put him on a rejection, you know, because the back burner, because I want to talk to him face to face, you know. I don't want to just talk over the phone. I want to talk face to face, heart to heart conversation of what really went on, you know, because for years, I'm going to my mom might get mad, but <laughs> for years, I always heard her side of the story. So I want to actually have a sit down conversation and want to really get to know what was the situation. Did you ever get a chance to do that? No, not yet. And it's something you still continue on. It's, it's something you still continuingly want to do. Yeah, I admit it. Yeah, I want to. So since was it the age of five or fifth grade? I can't remember. Five. Since the age of five to the age you're at now, I don't know if you want to share your age or not. No, you good? Okay. What age are you? 29. Okay, you're 29 now. You've never seen your father face to face. Never. How do you feel about that? I don't really know how to feel, to tell you the truth. Because, you know, from, from that time span to the, the age I am now, it's like, you've never been there, you know? When's the last time you've communicated with him? I'll say about... What age? It was recent. Okay. It was, it was about three to four months ago. Like I said, he tried to call and, you know, I didn't know the number. So picked up the phone, said it was him and I, you know, hung up. <laughs> I hate to say it, but yeah, I hung up. You hung up on him? Hung up. Why'd you hang up? Good. Like I said, I don't want to talk about nothing until we meet face to face. Oh, okay. Did you did you did you reiterate that in that conversation? No. Nope. No, but I'm going to, but not right now, not at that time. Why not? Why didn't you reiterate it then? Cuz I still got a lot of a lot of things that I still got to take care of first before I actually come to him and say that, but I do got older siblings that's on my dad's side, my father's side. And, you know, we, we conversate, you know, not so if I wanted to, I can like orchestrate it through, through them. Tough situation. Yeah, I mean, shit happen, it happen every day. You ever seen a professional over this stuff? What do you mean by that? Uh, a professional, like a mental health professional over this. Uh, could be a counselor, could be a therapist, could be... No, not at all. I feel like what you, what you need them for to tell you about yourself. You know, so I would rather handle the situation myself. Okay, so um, with that reply, I do want to share this, uh, and this is according to Talkspace.com, because um, there are some misconceptions about therapists. So I just wanted to read you a couple things just in case. Okay. Right? Uh, misconception, a therapist is like a friend you pay to listen to you. 
Thinking a therapist is only a friend for hire discounts the amount of education and training therapists com complete so they can improve clients' mental health. Most therapists have around six years of education. Some have more than a decade. Another misconception, a therapist tells you what to do. Most therapists will not tell you what to do. They're not like sports coaches for your life. They don't sit on the sidelines and shout instructions. Therapists work with clients to give them the skills to live better lives and make good decisions. They are supposed to empower you, not make you dependent on them. And uh, for those that want a definition of what a therapist is, a therapist or psychotherapist is a licensed mental health professional who helps clients improve their lives, develop better cognitive and emotional skills, reduce symptoms of mental illness, and cope with various challenges. Based on what I just said, do you think you need to see one of these? Nah. To be honest, because like I say, they got like they're sitting there listening to you. you got some that sit there and listen. Okay, you can have a friend, a good friend that'll just you know, listen and give their suggestions of things. And you know yourself better than anybody know you, so it's up to you to control or you know act upon how you feel or, or you know or, or to change the scenario or the situation or what's going on but you know some people got or i would say some people don't have the the willpower to change to where they need people like that but not me just a thought just curious there and uh You've never had that, for the record. No. Never seen a counselor, mental health professional, none of that stuff. No. And that's why I gave you the definition and those misconceptions there for our audience as well. Right. Because, you know, since you've never done that or never tried, those are assumptions that you have without ever trying it. So that's why I just wanted to kind of read you that blurb there. And again, if more people want to see where I got that information from, that's from Talkspace.com. Now, back to our conversation here. When it came to school, how many different elementary schools did you attend? Two. How many middle schools? Two. And how many high schools? One. And why the different schools there? Were you getting expelled? Nah. Did the trouble we, ever get that far? Nah, it's just the way we was moving from place to place. These were public schools? Yes. Did anyone attend your school? Did anyone that attended any of the schools you went to end up becoming famous themselves? No. How young did music start? When I was 17. 17 years old. It was me and my cousin. And his older brother had a studio, at the time he'd been a gospel rapper, so he had a studio and me and him were just in the room making songs or whatnot at third, so we was like, yo, you got a studio, let's go there. So they said, let's go. And then, first song I ever made been a song on Mother's Day for my mama. And then, ever since then, I just started making music. I, all, like, I always had the love for music, don't get me wrong, but when I first actually started laying down tracks, it was then. What was the name of that song? Mama. And is that song still available for people that want to hear it? Nah, it was on the CD, but nah, I didn't put it on any platform. Was it the CD era back then? Yeah. And when it came to music, it was rapping at first? Yeah, it was always rapping, you know, but it was a different type of rap. It was more of rapping with no cursing, you know? Because I feel like my songs should be played in cars with kids, 
if, you know, everybody should feel comfortable playing music in the car with kids. So I might rap about the same things, but limited to cursing, like on the 90s music days. And you're still like that today? Still like that today. And it's 2020 as of now? Yes, sir. For reference. And what's the reaction been to your music that you don't curse? There's no, there's never been an explicit advisory sticker on your, on your music? Yeah, it have, it have, it have, be, you know I mean, I, I might say probably like one thing, but as far as like, F this, F that, every track go, B, B this, B that, nah. Do people actually notice this? Yes, all the time. That's the first thing they notice. Oh man, you don't curse. Try to be different. Has that worked to your advantage or disadvantage? It worked to my advantage. Right now, in 2020, in your personal opinion, if we had a pie chart, let's say 100% circle, right? What is the percentage rappers curse in their music? You don't, but what is the percentage rappers curse in their music versus rappers like yourself that don't? Rough estimate, if you I'd could say, gauge it. I'd say about 95. Ever been tempted? Yeah. Ever ever get tired of being so clean? Ever? No, I never. Never, because I know, you know, there's a generation coming out right behind us, so, you know, I got to keep that same pace, that same movement. And then, to tell you the truth, like, what actually helped me towards that was going in my cousin's studio, like I say, like, he's a Christian rapper, we couldn't do no cursing. <laughs> so, so that right there developed my flow into what it is today. You don't curse in your music, but what is your stance on the N-word in regards to your music? I mean, it's just a word, you know. It's not like, I mean, it could be negative depending on how you use it. But it's just a word. So the context or the, of how it's used, it could right. be, okay. Right. Do you still use that? Even though you don't use curse words, do you use the N-word in your music? <sighs> or is that not used or limited as well, like the curse words? Uh, no, I don't, I don't use it. I don't use it at all, like, I don't use it. I'd rather say brother than the N-word. Or king. Um, what about in your everyday life, everyday conversating, do you use curse words? Yeah. Or the N-word <laughs> yeah, yeah. in everyday conversation? Yeah, yeah, I can lie sometimes when I'm mad, when I'm angry. You know, anybody use that type of language, but yeah, I do. Is that curse words and the N word? Yeah. Because I asked you both and I didn't know which one you were answering to. Uh, cur like, yeah, curse words. But like far as I do try to limit the N word when I talk to my people as my peers, you know, but in, like any other time I'll be like, yo, what's up, brother? You know, or if I talk to people, I'll be like, hey, what's going on, brother, man? And what about features? Okay, I know you don't really use these words and phrases in your music as you've stated already and described, but what about a feature? What about, what if a feature verse, and I don't know if you've had features yet or not, but what if a feature wants to curse, but you don't? Do you still accept that verse? Do you try to control that and manage it and say, hey, just don't use those words in the verse for me. How does that work? What's your policy or what's your stance on that? Just to let them do what they do, you know. Long as my part is the way it is, long as like my friends, my fans know me as, it's great. And because you don't curse or use certain phrases, do you notice that more kids gravitate towards your music? Yeah. Teenagers, adults, middle-aged adults, older adults, mature adults. Yeah, they're from senior citizens. I mean, what do you notice? What do you, what age group do you notice gravitates to that type of music? 
from from 17 to 35. You know, I got a slim, s slim percent for like 60, like 50s and 60s, because you know they grew up in a different era, so they not gonna gravitate to music of nowadays until they were referred about 17 to 35. Did you ever take a music class in school? Never. Why not? Because I was, I was in the sports. Okay. So never did the band, never did chorus? Never. Never did choir in the church? Never. I know, and some, you know, we've been talking about different things here in this discussion. So if I ask you something that we've already talked about, I apologize. But I know you mentioned, I think you said your cousin was a gospel rapper. Mm -hmm. Were you in church as well, like he was, or no? No, not at all. You know what I mean? He just had the studio and we just would go there. Do you follow a religion? No, not really. I feel like God is not religion, but a spiritual bond. You know, some people might don't see it as that. I don't know nobody religion, but that's just my opinion. Were you raised to follow a religion? Yeah, Christian Christianity. All my family grew up in Christ, you know, Christianity, Amy churches. But I just chose to never take that route. At um, what? At what age or what grade do you make a decision like that? Or were you... When I was... Where you become more... When I was like 15. At 15, I started doing research and, you know, the way of life. If you look at it, everything is basically common sense, you know. What's been the reaction from those in your family who do believe in religion and follow the Christian faith and... No reaction. Like okay. we, we, we all don't we, we would voice out we would voice our opinion but we all don't knock each other's opinion, you know. We stick to what we know and that's that. Before we talk about sports, you got into music when you were seventeen. So you were uh you had gotten the G E D by then, right? You were at a boot camp by then? No. I got it when I was 18. Yeah, I got it when I was 18. So then, then did music start when you were in boot camp or it started right before boot camp? Right before. Were you ever the type to freestyle or battle rap? All day long. All, I'm talking about, I got a couple homies to where we used to just sit outside to about five o'clock in the morning from earlier that evening and just freestyle all day long. Good enough to kick a freestyle right now? I'm about to do it on camera. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Did you have a song you were promoting back then? Like that song about your mother, was that something you were promoting or that's just a song you made? That, that was just your first song? Yeah, that, yeah, that's just a song I made. I wasn't really, really into making music like that, you know? Did you ever participate in talent shows growing up? You did play sports. Great. What sports exactly? Football. So just one sport? And how far did you go with football? To the semi-pro league. The semi-pro league. Can you explain that? Like there's a team in Charleston that's called, like, they're, like they don't exist no more, but it was the Walterboro Bulls. And, you know, I used to go there, like, one day I w was referred to it by it, and like, yo, you need to go play football. Like, All right, cool. And ever since then, I just started playing football. What age was the, uh, what well, age was that when you joined the like, semi-pro league there? 21, 22. So this was well after boot camp, yeah. GED. Right. 
So were you still in shape? Were you still playing football? Yeah, like flag, flag football and stuff like that. Throw up tackle. And how long did you do semi-pro for? I did that for about three, three to four years. And were you a starter? When I first started, nah. But then I developed into being a starter as a running back. What jersey number? 27. Any meaning behind that? Yeah, because I've been my brother um, number in high school. He's been the best, so I thought I'd take the number and continue the legacy of it. And that's another question I had, too, is how many siblings, same mother, same father, as you? Or were you the only one? Like three. The three of us on my mama's side. It's like six of us on my daddy's side. But how many same mother, same father of the siblings? Three. Okay. And, and which ones were they? My sister and my oldest brother that I'm talking about as far as with the football. And this is a younger sister? Nah, I'm the, I'm the youngest. Oh, out of all three? Yeah. Okay. So your brother played football. Correct. Right. And you played football. And uh, what about any other family members? Did any older family members play football as well? Was that something that ran in your family, so to speak? Mm -hmm. That sport there? It was uh, three sports, you know, basketball and soccer. What about your own father? Do you know if he played football or not? No. Nah. And what led you to football initially? Was it the fact that your brother was already playing it, or no. what drew you to that sport there? Because you could choose in, uh, soccer or basketball, right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Just watching it on TV, you know. And then I forgot to mention, but like before I went off the boot camp to the high school, I was at, I was in, I would say eighth grade, eighth grade at the time. You know how, like I don't know if you're familiar with B teams, but it was a, a neck, a, a lower level of a high school, only for people who was in middle school. And you know, the coaches had wanted me. Went to show up at practice one day. The coaches had wanted me. And then cut it because I got sent off the boot camp. So how young did you start playing football? When? What age or what grade did this stuff start? When I was little. When I was little. I, I played for the recreation, small fry league. And then I was like... No, like seven, seven years old. And that's something you wanted to do on your own or did someone put a battery behind your back to do? I didn't want to do it on my own. And okay, so after seven years old, you're in small fry league, what other leagues would you do before you ended up uh, in that B situation? That was it. Just the small fry league? Yeah. And then, I and then you took a break? Yeah. And then it was the B team. Right. And then another break because of boot yeah. camp. And, <laughs> yeah. And then you do like flag football league right. and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, semi pro. And then semi pro. Right. And semi pro, you make it the first time you try out? No. They don't just pick any everybody. You got to be good. So the first time you try out, you didn't get picked? Yeah, I did get picked. Oh, you did get picked. Yeah, I did okay. get picked, but I just wasn't a starter at the time. Got you. You worked your way up to right. being a starter. Right. So when did you start? Was it year two, year three, year four? Year two. And what's something like that payout? What's the pay like for someone on semi-pro league? Well, starter, we, running back. At the time, we wasn't, like, I was the one with just, like, like a recreational one. It wasn't no pay. It wasn't oh. a paid organization. It was basically at your own risk. I basically. see. Did you guys ever win the championship? <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, last question with the football. Uh, when you were younger and you did small fry league and then you did a little bit of that B situation, uh, what position were you there? Running back. Okay, so running back throughout. Right. Okay. 
you think if you would have stayed in high school and kept going with football, you could have gotten some sort of athletic scholarship to a college? Oh, yeah. It's facts. Do you know how far you would have gotten? Would it would have been like Division Two, II, Division One? Would it? I would have gone. Just, if you want to bypass, I've been in the NFL. You believe that? Yeah, strongly. Has anyone ever told you that, or is that just your own personal belief? Everybody told me that. Like I've been good. Do you regret that? Yeah. Yeah. And what was your mother's reaction to you finishing boot camp and getting that GED? I felt it was a burden, a burden off her shoulder, because I was the only one that didn't, at the time, had like a diploma or something to say that I finished school. And you passed the first time you take the GED yeah. test? What did this entire experience teach you? My final thought, my final question, I should say, I'm sorry. What did this entire experience teach you? When I say entire experience, I mean, you know, leaving high school, going to boot camp when you did, getting the GED route, you weren't able to go with football through college, possibly the NFL. What, the whole entire experience there, uh, what do you just, take away from that, if anything? Did that teach you anything? Did you learn anything from that? Yeah, I learned like, shit, you can throw your life away in a blink of an eye, you know? Make good choices, do the right thing, and then you get further in life. If you don't, you know what happened, you know? Jail, graveyard, you know? So, I mean, it taught me a lot.